Snow Tracks is sponsored by Skidoo Snowmobiles. Experience that Skidoo feeling. Yamaha revs your heart. And by FXR Racing. Maximum versatility for all conditions. In model year 2019, the introduction of the all new ACE Turbo 900 engine propelled Skidoo to even higher levels of success and acceptance in the four-stroke market. The engine was bulletproof, fast, and fuel efficient. The turbo debuted in a plethora of G4 variant genres, including the MXZ, the Renegade, and Grand Touring. The engine produces such abundant power, there's not been a peep of a complaint regarding the rapid exit of the former 1200 triple four-stroke. This reality is even more profound when you realize there's a substantial uptick in MSRP for the turbo over the old 1200 Fortec engine. For model year 20, the turbo returns in the Renegade Enduro, Skidoo's answer to the increasingly popular adventure touring segment. This is a great place for a four-stroke motor and an even better place for a 150 horsepower turbo. The definitive adventure touring ride has to look a little different and possess some standard amenities. Keep in mind, this isn't predominantly an off-trail or deep snow genre. It's about having the versatility to run big miles without concern for snow depth or distance. The Enduro is a full-on Renegade, so it uses a 137-inch camo shredder, which you can and should order up as a 125-inch lug ice ripper. The 900 turbo engine is a purpose-built snowmobile power plant with a variant model used in the Maverick side-by-side. It is worth noting that in the Maverick, the engine produces 173 horsepower. While more power, in our estimation, is always a good thing, the Enduro at 150 horsepower is a blast to ride on hardpack trails. There is tons of jam right off engagement and not a hint of turbo lag in the engine's power delivery. The 900 displays a strong predisposition to surge past the C-note and pull well into triple digits down Kevlar Lake. Some of the engine's strong performance can be credited to the use of Skidoo's P-Drive primary clutch. Skidoo's 1200 Fortec established a reputation for strong performance at the big end, and this 900 Turbo continues that legacy. In fact, it would be safe to say this engine is an overachiever. So what makes an Enduro an Enduro? Standard stuff like a heated seat, mirrors, and a bush bumper, which unfortunately this particular version doesn't have, these are some of the accoutrements required for the adventure genre. A high windshield is appreciated by big mile riders, as is Skidoo's industry-leading link accessory system, which can transform your Enduro into a twofer in a matter of seconds. Available link luggage, unique storage attachments, and gas-carrying accessories can be mounted on the rear tunnel and are almost limitless. The Enduro comes with Skidoo's tunable skis, which allow the rider to dial in more or less bite up front by simply turning this knob up or down. In this application, we're solidly in support of the use of these boards. In some G4s, we have found the TS skis produce oversteer on some surfaces and understeer on others. In the Enduro application, the skis make good sense. If you wake up to six inches of new snow on a hard pack base, you know it's going to be a long day dragging the brake and pushing through turns. With the TS adjustable skis in play, you can simply drop the carbide blade all the way out of the ski, and handling on loose snow will immediately become more positive, dramatically reducing understeer. One issue we've had with the Turbo 900 and all Skidoo four-stroke sleds is this drive-by-wire throttle. 
In eco mode, it produces a rubbery, laggy response. And in sport mode, it produces an overly sensitive, jerky response to throttle inputs. While riders ultimately do learn to compensate for the throttle, we find it odd that the best way to control this condition is to operate in standard or eco mode all the time. This seems like a big compromise to make when you've paid for a turbocharged 150 horsepower engine. Go figure. While the Enduro gives off a less aggressive attitude than its stablemate Renegade, this sled is a blast to ride fast on trails. The corner-to-corner -corner boosted response from the small diameter Rotax built turbo is impressive. For model year 20, Skidoo brings the Enduro back with little change aside from this all-new digital gauge cluster. The new LCD gauge easily delivers tons of pertinent info while underway using this familiar left side mounted toggle. The new display is exceptionally easy to read and is perfectly lit day and night. After one ride using this gauge, you won't miss the former analog digital combination gauge seen on Skidoo since the original XP. If you like to make a statement with your ride and like to be known as a big mile adventure tourer, then the 2020 Enduro must be on your list of sleds to check out this season. I'm back here in the Trail Tech shop with Jared from MBRP, looking at a couple of new exhausts from MBRP that I think are really gonna change the way that you guys look at aftermarket exhausts. These new exhausts are from the Quiet series, and as you can guess, they're just that. A feature-packed, lightweight, but quiet exhaust aimed at keeping you legal out on the trails while also keeping the neighbors happy. So Jared, in front of us, we've got the 430Q. Mm -hmm. This is for the 850 Polaris, and it's kind of the latest in the Quiet series. What goes into this, and what are the features and benefits that we're going to get from it? Well, as you know, we do many alterations, again, with dyno testing and stuff like that, too. But this one specifically, um, in comparison to the race and the trail design, um, you know, so race is like a four-inch body, uh, trail is like a six-inch. This one, we've actually gone with an oval design to kind of control, you know, the flow and everything as well with the exhaust and allow us to kind of dampen the sound as it goes, it works its way through the muffler. Okay. Um, something like this, you're going to see an extra horsepower gain. One um, horsepower? Yeah, so again, cool. it took us a lot to really get to that. Six pounds in weight savings too, and as well with the DB level, it's very, very close to stock, even throughout most of the power band. Um, if you're a guy that likes, you know, heavy acceleration, wide open throttle, you notice a bit of a change, but nothing super crazy. And again, earning the name of the Quiet Series. And you're getting a two-year warranty as well. Exactly. Two-year warranty on anything, you know, on, on brackets, material, anything like that. Any issues, just give us a call. But again, fully back for two-year warranty. Cool. Now, when you add to this the more robust, TIG welded, laser cut brackets, 304 stainless, uncoated body that can be repolished at any time, or the guaranteed fitment and easy installation, as well as improved throttle response, we really have an MBRP feature-packed exhaust with a sound that's very similar to stock in terms of decibels. So the fact that it's close to stock on DB doesn't mean that we're gonna lose out on all that cool kind of MBRP hallmark sound, right? Exactly, you know, anybody can really build a loud exhaust, but to build something that's tuned and has a nice sound with, you know, stock DB levels truly, yep. really takes a lot of testing and that's what we were able to deliver at MBRP. Sweet. Second in the quiet series of exhaust is the 132Q for Skidoo, but the folks at MBRP were able to not only fit the 850 into this design, but also the 600R with the exact same exhaust. So you could buy it for your 600R and then take it with you if you were to upgrade to an 850 down the road. Like the Polaris, we see a true one horsepower increase in power, the same six pounds weight savings with all the other benefits like 304 stainless, TIG welded design, and the guaranteed fitment. But the sound on the 132Q exhaust for Skidoo is even lower at a match decibel level to the stock exhaust that we've replaced. Well, typically with our MBRP exhaust, we'll kind of stop here, but for this week, I wanted to take these things out on the trail and see exactly how they sound because I haven't actually had firsthand experience with them. Yeah, let's get suited up and go test them out. Let's do it. Sweet. Right away, you're gonna notice the deeper tone to the exhaust, but while I say that, I don't think it means more noise because surprisingly, the sound doesn't climb like your typical loud silencer. Even when I crack the throttle and open the sled up, it's still very refined and, well, really quiet. However, keep in mind at anywhere past three-quarter throttle, this exhaust does have a much more enhanced sound. Does the throttle response feel like it's improved? Well, that's really hard to account for, but I would say that the throttle response, one extra horsepower, and six pounds less do translate into better seat-of-the-pants feel. And while we're about the same decibels as stock, I now have a far more pleasing sound of the exhaust with a throatier and deeper note. Okay, so Jared, you got to tell me what went into these exhausts and these sleds because after riding them, 
I'm a believer, but prior to this, honestly, I didn't think you guys could do what you did with getting the sound level so low. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there was a ton of R&D that went into this. I think we had uh, our owner, Martin, sled on the dyno for probably most of the summer, about a year ago. Uh, we did 11 different alterations, actually, and I think we were, there was a few times we actually thought, yeah, we're, I don't think we're going to make it. We don't release anything that, you know, doesn't make at least one horsepower. Yep. That we finally arrived at what we have and, you know, very happy with it. And obviously, as we've done some riding today, it, uh, it works well. Absolutely. I, honestly, it's a little bit throatier, a deeper, nicer tone, but I, I'm blown away. This sounds like a stock sled. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, no, so really happy with it again, too. And, you know, let's kind of take a bit of a back step, too, and realize why we kind of came to this, too. And as more and more people get concerned with sound levels, you know, we want to make sure we're contributing also to a solution and making sure that people are using, you know, aftermarket exhaust in the right place too. We don't want to be painted with that brush. So, you know, take some of our other applications like a race exhaust. Yep. You know, we work with like Anderson Racing, the CSRA we're heavily involved with and everything too. And, and those are the, you know, environments you use that product with. But for guys that use our exhaust, you know, all over the place, like Minnesota, you know, Michigan, places where you can run an exhaust, this is a this is a perfect solution for those environments. Absolutely, race on the racetrack and quiet series on the trail. Exactly. Cool. I gotta say that I'm super impressed with what you guys at MBRP have been able to deliver with both of these exhausts. I mean, I didn't think it was possible, but I do think that this is the way of the future for both satisfying state and provincial laws while also getting all of that performance that high performance guys crave to get out of their sleds. Absolutely, and that's something that, that's really our goal at MBRP, and I think you're something you're gonna see to continue as this sort of exhaust product here in the future. Trail Tech is sponsored by Princess Auto. Make it work. Ipone may be best known in the snowmobile industry for its strawberry smelling two-stroke oil as well as its ester-based four-stroke motor oils, but the truth is that Ipone is so much more than just these two great products. Since its debut in 1985, Ipone has been a company focused on the enthusiast and today, nearly 35 years later, they've not wavered and continue to produce high-performance lubricants and specialty products for motorsports enthusiasts, particularly those in the power sports division, and their reach is far larger than just the snowmobile market, with recreational power sports products spanning 12 months of the year. And today I want to introduce you to just a few of the very wide range of products that Ipone offers for the power sports enthusiast, not just the Snow 2 and Snow 4 motor oils that we use in all of our sleds here at Snow Tracks and Super Tracks. However, to reinforce the quality of the Ipone lubricants, we now have two full seasons of hard use, adding up to tens of thousands of miles and the results are undisputable. From the incredible four-stroke minus 40 degree cold starts, even late in the oil's life, to consistent clean burning two-stroke motors with absolutely zero fouled plugs, we are certain that Ipone oils are increasing the reliability of our sleds, both two and four stroke. And the one thing that we still get a kick out of is the strawberry smell coming from all of our two-stroke sleds. Earlier I mentioned products that span 12 months of the year, and the truth is while we're used to seeing snowmobile products from Ipone, they make nearly 260 products for the power sports industry alone. They have dedicated lines for motorcycle, scooter, ATV, marine, snow, and then also a specialty maintenance section of products. Everything from chain cleaners and lube to fork fluid to quick inflate tire sealant and then a full line of gear cleaning and maintenance products such as leather cleaner, textile cleaner with a built-in scrub brush and helmet cleaner both inside and out. Ipone truly offers you a product for just about everything that you can imagine in the power sports world. Now one product that'll cover nearly any power sports performance toy is the extreme racing brake fluid. Now this is something that us as sledders hardly ever change out but definitely should do more frequently. The extreme heat cycles of a hydraulic brake system means that the fluid that we use gets subject to incredible duty cycles, which is hard on any fluid. Ipone designed a 100% synthetic brake fluid with the highest possible boiling point of 204 Celsius or 328 Fahrenheit. Designed for competition use, this brake fluid will deliver superior stopping power. Now there are some Ipone products that here at Snow Tracks we all go to a little bit more frequently because of their everyday usability. Both the carbon brake cleaner, along with the cleaner polish and the plastic shine are our go-tos. They come in huge 750 mil cans at a similar price to the competition's smaller cans. And one of the best features, besides getting all that extra product in one can, 
is the multi-position diffuser, or in easy terms, the spray nozzle. It tilts in and locks in a closed position, and then it can be opened to multiple angles and also reacts to the amount of pressure that you apply, giving either a heavy soak or a powerful jet spray action. These cans are by far the nicest design that I've ever used, and because they're so much bigger, you don't have to keep going back to the cabinet or the store to grab more. While I've only touched the surface on the broad scope of products offered by iPone to the power sports enthusiast, I wanted to give you a little bit of a better view into the company and also the faith that we have not only in their specialty lubricants, but also in all of their cleaning and maintenance products that they offer to you, the power sports enthusiast. There was a time when only a select few of the fastest riders in the world had the opportunity to get their hands on brand new, fully spec race leads. They were limited builds, only a few hundred made each year, every one of them allotted to pre-selected individuals. But today, things are very different. While Polaris isn't the only manufacturer offering race-inspired sleds in their lineup, they do it best by offering a sled that is exactly the same as what the Pro Class guys are racing. It's not similar, it's not sort of, it's the same sled. The XCR is Polaris's cross-country racing sled, and last season's Polaris factory cross-country racers switched from the Axis chassis to the new Indy XC129 platform and found immediate success. It only stands to reason that a new XCR model would follow suit. So the big news for 2020 is the new Indy XCR 129. And of course, now the most important questions we need to answer are, what's different versus a regular Indy, and is it actually any better? The short answer to the first question is, a lot. The long answer is, everything that was included on the Pro XC-based XCR is now included on the Indy XC version, plus a whole bunch more. Let's take a little deeper look and let's start at the rear of the sled. Now, obviously the XCR Indy rides on Polaris's stellar Pro CC 129 inch skid frame. Geometrically, it is almost identical to the standard Pro CC. Now, I say almost because the XCR uses a 2.52 pitch track, which is about one inch shorter overall, but is preferred because it gets more lugs on the ground, which translates into more traction. This skid also gets a massive boost in durability thanks to a four wheel rear axle with solid wheels, braced rails, a braced tunnel, aluminum coupler blocks, and stiffer torsion springs. The most impressive upgrade on the rear of the XCR though is definitely its set of two inch bodied Walker Evans Velocity Needle shocks, which are arguably the highest tech, most impressive shocks in the industry. As you move forward on the sled, you'll find aggressive running boards and the overstructure that supports the steering post is made of aluminum rather than carbon fiber for ultimate stiffness and durability. Under hood, there are a few tricks as well. A beefed up haze brake is cooled by this side panel mounted vent for ultimate fade resistance. A solid jack shaft is tough as nails and an axis performance seat, fixed bar riser and race style bar round out the XCR package. The front suspension is, again, damped by a set of Walker Evans Velocity needle shocks that feature a full list of adjustments. More adjustments than the average rider will know what to do with, but cool to have nonetheless. To answer the question I posed earlier, how does it work? That's where the fun begins. To properly test an XCR, it has to be ridden to its absolute limits. You gotta push it hard, and darn it, it's gotta be jumped. So that's exactly what I did, day after day, week after week. The truth is though, it didn't take nearly that long to see just how good this setup really is. On a groomed trail, the XCR rails like it's on rails. The front end sticks to the ground like all Axis IFS equipped sleds do. The inside ski lifts just a few inches off the ground and then it stays there, which helps transfer the weight of the vehicle onto the outside ski, which simply tears itself into the snow, providing predictable and confidence inspiring handling characteristics. But this isn't only true when it's smooth. The Axis front end combined with the equally as composed Pro CC rear end help the Indy XCR maintain perfect composure in all conditions, from freshly groomed to a Sunday afternoon at Tug Hill. Much of these stellar handling characteristics are of course thanks to this awesome set of Walker Evans Velocity Needle shocks that Polaris describes as position sensing. Basically, the damping characteristics of the shock change as the shock moves through its stroke. Anti-bottoming is taken care of by the ultra-fast compression ramp up that occurs when the needle does its thing. Now with all this praise comes the one and only criticism for this version of the XCR. Its handling is not quite as planted or precise as the previous Pro XC equipped XCRs. It's not far off though, and it's still ridiculously good. Ergonomically, the XCR is ultra-aggressive because it's supposed to be. 
This was never meant to be a slow speed touring sled. It's meant to be ridden up on the tank with your knee way out over the side panel. There's no question a big part of how fun this sled is to ride is attributed to Polaris's fantastic Patriot 850 engine. By now, you've all heard our thoughts on this motor and how it performs. What's important about this motor in the XCR though is its smoothness. While many assume that racing is all about jamming the throttle as hard as possible, the truth of the matter is that being fast on a cross-country course requires monk-like levels of throttle control and smoothness. Two things that are made infinitely easier with a Patriot 850 under the hood. I think what makes the Indy XCR 850 a great consumer sled is that while it is absolutely capable of being raced as hard as any pro rider ever could, it can also be set up to ride, handle, and behave extremely well for the average trail rider as well. Polaris nailed the XCR when it was first introduced as a pro XC based rush and it got even better as a switchback. But there's no question in my mind, the 2020 Indy XC based XCR is the best XCR Polaris has ever offered. Snow Tracks has been sponsored by Polaris Snowmobiles. MBRP Performance Exhaust. Race inspired, trail proven, and by Hercules Tire. Ride on our strength. If you like what you've just seen, click the subscribe button and comment below. And make sure you check out all of our great videos on Snowtracks TV's YouTube channel.